This is Lowell Thomas, and we are on our way up the Nile. For 3,200 years, the Nile has flown past the temple of Abu Simbel. Carved into the sandstone cliff by order of the pharaoh Ramses II. One of the superb art treasures of our civilization. But soon this majestic site will be completely flooded because the Nile is being forced upward by a new dam. And as the water rises, a desperate effort is being made to rescue Abu Simbel. scene of this struggle against time, remote Nubia, near the border between Egypt and the Sudan. Here, since 1,200 years before the birth of Christ, colossal Abu Simbel has stood, dedicated by the Pharaoh to himself and his queen. The imposing structure, 130 feet across, 100 feet high. The four huge seated figures, all likenesses of Ramses himself. While the outside of the temple is truly overwhelming, an even more miraculous accomplishment can be seen inside. Tunneled over 200 feet into the rock are chambers containing handsome statuary and carved paintings. It is this ancient jewel that groups from all over the world are trying to preserve. An appeal for funds was made in 1960 by UNESCO. The response from nations on every continent provided money for preliminary work. The question, how could such an enormous job be tackled? One plan called for raising the entire temple by working hundreds of hydraulic jacks in unison. That scheme abandoned in favor of sawing out huge blocks, lifting them 200 feet to the top of the cliff and re-erecting Abu Simbel there. This seemed logical in theory, but could it be completed before the floodwaters rushed in? The new location was chosen because it would be above the level at which the Nile was expected to crest. Feverish activity began immediately in a joint effort. Engineers from six companies representing five countries gathered to plan the intricate details of the ticklish moving job. Every bit of stone was meticulously measured. The new interior became a forest of stanchions braced in all directions. Plastic cushioning at the ends of the steel beams to protect the valuable decorated walls. But it soon became apparent that progress was too slow. Every day the river rose, threatening inundation. Emergency action was taken. A coffer dam would be rushed up to keep the Nile away for the two years that were needed to complete the rescue. As explained in an article in the January Reader's Digest, building the stopgap wall was a near heroic achievement. Sand, a constant enemy, finding its way into the machinery. Temperatures up to 125 degrees. Supplies and men had to be brought in by riverboat from 175 miles downstream because no road or railroad existed. Tourists can come here by river steamer, but temporary housing for laborers had to be erected. Every moment counted. The deadline had to be met, and it was. By August of 1964, the first part of the big race was over, and barely won. The copper dam, a quarter of a mile long and 450 feet high, it was ready. Next, the facade was covered with sand to protect it while sawing took place, by hand as delicately as possible. A master chart called for the cutting of 350 blocks, weighing from five to 30 tons each. The aim to slice where the least violence would be done to the ornate carvings. Every block that was cut free was numbered to aid in the later reassembly. Some could be lifted by hand, for bigger ones, holes were bored and steel rods inserted. These were used as lifting handles. Thus, they could be hoisted by giant cranes without ropes or cables that might bite into the carved surfaces and mar them. 
Then, trucks operating on roads built for the purpose hauled each slab to the high plateau. Things were really humming by early 1965, but the schedule was tight indeed. So, round-the-clock operations began, working in relays for 24 hours a day. The men found the night shift quite pleasant. The brutal daylight heat was absent. Huge generators, laboriously dragged here, provided electricity for illumination. Sand was spread atop the cliff, making a soft, temporary resting place for the blocks. And that is where we stand today. The temple in pieces, awaiting its rebirth. It is out of danger, but three and a half million dollars must be raised to rebuild it. Without these funds, the temple blocks may lie in the desert indefinitely. If you would like to aid the restoration of glorious Abu Simbel to its former grandeur, send your tax-deductible contribution to me, Lowell Thomas, care of the Reader's Digest, Pleasantville, New York. You will receive a prompt acknowledgement. A cultural legacy for the future asks for your help today.